You are watching the Whovians podcast. You sensible people. Isn't it fun? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Whovians. And today, on this 51st anniversary weekend of Doctor Who, yes, it's been 50, 51 years of some great Doctor Who episodes, and we're all loving them. We are going to be talking about the great classic episode, The Five Doctors. The Five Doctors, which I absolutely love, and, you know, I spent... A lot of my late 80s, early 90s, really just re-watching that episode because it was so freaking awesome. And today, I have some great friends with me. I have the, our our great editor-in-chief, Jimmy Porto. How you doing, man? Hello. Hey, bro. I have with me, Neo. How you doing, Neo? Sorry. Hello. Hey, Love how you it. doing? Hey. I have... Our good buddy dressed up as the second doctor, Lee Wilson, is here with us today. How you doing, Lee? When I say run, run. You better run when he says run. I have our good buddy Kevin here with us today. How you doing, Kevin? Very well. I have the great Beef Dad with us today. How you doing, Beef Dad? I'm good. Ready oh. to go. Awesome. Good to have you here, my man. We got Brian here with us today. How you doing, Brian? What's up, everybody? Peace. What's up, man? Peace. Hey, Daniel's here with us today. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, thank you. Awesome, man. Awesome. Good to have you. We have, from Texas, Texas Tim Wells is here with us today. How you doing, Texas Tim? And we have Harry with us today, man. How you doing, Harry? So today... You know, we're going to get into this five doctor story, which is awesome. And we have plenty to talk about with it. Okay, Lee. All right. Let's see what you thought about this episode, Mr. Lee Wilson. Right. Where to start? As I think people know, I'm not a very big fan of Peter Davison's era. But to me, the five doctors is how an anniversary should be celebrated. You know, it, it get the old cast back, get the old doctors, have a, just have a Whopping good adventure, and it that's what it is. It's fun. We pet we Troughton, they're at the best there, you know. Um, even um, oh, what's his name, Richard Handel, who replaced the first doctor, he did a pretty good job there, you know. I mean, he didn't look the same, but he did a pretty good job. Um, yeah, it was all it was brilliant. I mean, he even had you know the Cybermen. Solo Dalek. I mean, there could have been more Dalek, but Solo Dalek. But uh, yeah, it's a, a, I would say one of my favourites, and that's how a celebration should be done. I would say ten out of ten for me. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. It, classic. It, yeah, well, written well and everything. Yeah, ten out of ten. All right, beautiful man. Thank you, sir. Okay, Jimmy Porto, my good buddy, published author, by the way. He's a good man. What did you think of this episode? I did not like it that much. I was expecting more. Um, I like the original better than the uh, new special effects re-edited. I have them both. I have the original on VHS. I have the updated one on DVD. But for the, with the three doctors, you had at least two of them working together most of the time. Uh, William Hartnell was ill, but there was a couple scenes where all three of them were together. And that's what I was hoping, for the doctors to actually be working together. They don't actually work together until towards the end, and then for maybe five minutes. So I was expecting more. But it's you do have the, the doctors there, and that's something to be thankful for. And uh, Pertwee is great. Troughton is great. They are great in their roles. Can't knock that. The Rastun Warrior Robot. Wish that would return. It, I was expecting more. And I didn't get what I was expecting. And uh, I was kind of disappointed with what I got. So I would give it a six. Uh, a six, huh? All righty, bro. Thank you very much for your input. 
All right, Neo, what did you think of this episode? Okay. I'm going to go to bit on each doctor. Um, when I first, when I saw um, the guy who played William Martin, I was, I said, okay, I gave him, you know, I wanted to see how he acted. He was pretty good. I love the scene when he's in there. I think he was in there with Susan. Yeah, he was in there with Susan. That, that brought back classic for me. I was just like, oh, yeah, classic, the garlic, everything. Okay, cool. Corridors. I said, all right, cool. Love that part. On to Trojan. Amazing. I loved it when he met up with the Brigadier again. And you can tell that was the Brigadier's true doctor. He loves that man. Um, Pertwee, I, uh, all I could say for him was the stud spare cap. That yellow via. Beautiful. And I love um, his meetup with Sarah Jane. Loved it. Tom Baker, I am so sad he couldn't be in this one. But the clip they showed was pretty good. And I like how they edited and did the clip really good to make it fit. Ah, uh, Peter Davison, Peter Davison. Uh, I don't know what to say about him. He's, he's not, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. He's okay in this. I like it when he's running around like in kinder or something like that, but He's okay. I did like when he got like controlled or overtaken by a high that high commander or whoever it was. I love that. I love that part. But all in all, it was a good episode. The story was good. Um, the story was good. The villains were good. Classic villains. A nice feel of nostalgia for each, each doctor. So I'd have to give this one. Oh, I want to give it a ten out of ten. I really do. I'm gonna give it a nine point. Five, because I like the three doctors better. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's a good score. Good score. Thank you, Neo. All right. The most beautiful beef dad. Now, what did you think about this one, sir? I, we definitely want to hear your input on this, sir. I have very special memories of this one. Um, I remember sitting and watching it with my son, Beefhead. Uh, he was five at the time and couldn't understand why there were five doctors. So I had to explain regeneration to him, and then the fact that because they could all travel in time, that they could all cross each other's timelines, which was a bit difficult for him to grasp at the time. I presume he's since grasped the whole thing. Richard Herndl as the first doctor, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Wasn't sure about the Buffon hairstyle, but um, the same sort of crotchety side to him. Um, but we're lacking a little bit of the hardness of Bill. Patrick Troughton, I love the way they accompanied his every appearance with recorder music. And of course, the Brigadier was the Brigadier. And always is, always will be. Um, John Pertwee, yeah, lovely. What I really liked was the fact that they gave Sarah Jane her own kidnapping rather than with another doctor, which just goes to show how important Sarah Jane was in the Doctor Who Chronicles. Yeah, very sad that um, Tom Baker didn't do more, but contractual obligations understandable but a shame it would have been wonderful to see how he would interact with the first doctor because their characters were very very similar and well peter davidson timothy's first doctor there is a reason why he had a limp piece of celery stuck in his lapel he was i would say probably one of the limpest doctors of the lot and i'm afraid that limp piece of celery and his lapel said it all for me the story itself wonderful built built beautifully during the first half tended to slow down a bit during the second half um excellent writing some wonderful bits of um twists and turns in the plot as far as 
the key to getting into the chamber was concerned using the harp and the music being on the portrait. I like that. I also like the fact that Peter Davison can play the harp, which rather surprised me. Rassilon himself, <laughs> that marvellous appearance of Rassilon, which every time I see it makes me laugh because I think to myself, my God, it's the wizard. Where's Dorothy, the scarecrow, the tin man, the lion? It is absolutely, looks as though it's been lifted out of Wizard of Oz. Rassilon's just, no, it, it, it's wrong. It was a piece of comedy, really, I think. And the master, using the master, excellent. And Flavia actually ended up being one of my favourites of the Time Lords. Um, she appeared again later. And Flavia, Flavia is an excellent character, brilliantly played. Wonderful to see Susan back, even if it was only briefly, even if only for a very short time because she twisted her ankle. What a surprise there. I wonder how many times Susan actually twisted her ankle during the original run. <laughs> and um, yeah, one day he will go back. Yes, he will go back. But I wish they'd make it soon and at least put all our minds to rest. It, it's a wonderful, as I say, on a personal note, it's a wonderful episode for me. On a Whovian note, I think it is also a wonderful episode because there's humour in it. There's humour in it, there's a good storyline, there's excellent villains. It's it's everything I would have wanted. It gets a nine and a half from me. All right, beautiful, beautiful beef dad. Thank you, sir. Awesome. All right, let's see. Let's see what how about you, Daniel? What do you have to say about this episode, man? It's probably up there with my favorite classics classic episodes it was probably one of the first two because i used to collect a um a booklet you know full of like, like uh companion uh you know profiles and villain profiles and, stuff like that. and they would have like a classic episode or a any episode that you know like it started with like rose and then when the series got stale you know when they had to you know, had to go back to the classic to wait for like stuff coming out. Um, so they did catch. So they went to the classic stuff, and that was one of the first classics that were, came with it. So the Five Doctors, um, for me, be one of the first classics I saw, was definitely very good because I get to see, I got to see, um, you know, I'd known about Sarah Jane, and I'd known that she was a classic episode companion, but I didn't know what she know what she was like back then. So, seeing characters like, you know, seeing the Doctors, seeing, um, you know, uh, Richard, you know, take over for uh, William, obviously being dead, and, you know, we're having to take his place, and the Doctors working together really well, and all the companions working together really well. It was good to see, like, Brigadier, it was good, obviously he returned so many times, but uh, we got to see Sarah Jane again, we got to see... Uh, bit more character development in Tegan and Turlow. We got to see a bit in, uh, we got to see Susan. We got to see all these like companions and, and doctors. And also like we got to see the master. He was really cool. Um, and it was good that he teamed up with the Cybermen. And it was quite interesting that they did that again, you know, in the in the new Who. And, you know, the master's the master. So it's, you know, he's, he's, he's going to definitely team up with some, but yeah, anyway, it was it was cool to see Gallifrey and Rassilon was really cool. The idea of the the Death Zone, I think it was was it the Death Zone? Yeah, yeah, the Death Zone. That that was a really cool um that was a really cool area, and it was good to bring some of the out. It would be cool to see the Rostov Warrior Robot again. It was an interesting uh, character, you know, villain or whatever it was, and it would be cool in the new Who as well, like with Peter Capaldi. So, um. All in all, I'd give it a 10 out of 10 for, you know, story, characters, and making me, um, you know, making me consider that there was, like, Doctor Who before what I know of, you know, with the, you know, with the new Who stuff. So, 
all in all, 10 out of 10. All right, cool. Thank you, Daniel. All right, let's see. You know what's cool, I want to say? It's cool because, you know, like, you know, for younger fans to go back to watch classic episodes, you're always like, oh, what episodes should they check out? I, I think that's a good one to check out because you get a mix of all the different doctors' personalities, which are which is pretty cool. All right, um, Texas Tim, what are your thoughts on this great episode? <clears throat> well, happy anniversary, everyone. First of all, um, it's a it's a fun episode. It's a, it's a cool anniversary episode. It's like uh, pretty well written, and it's. It holds up pretty good after all these years. It's 31 years old today. One interesting fact is it was actually broadcast here in the States before it was broadcast on BBC One because they actually showed it on the anniversary, which was November 23rd. Um, and BBC One, for whatever, sat on it for a couple of days. But yeah, it's a good, fun little anniversary story. It's not the best. It's, um, in fact, it, there's, it could have been, a couple of things could have been done better, like, uh, uh, when you have all those companions in there, there's not much for them all to do. For example, so uh, I guess Susan and Turlo spend a lot of time just hanging out in the TARDIS while everybody else is doing things. And then there's that ridiculous uh, pratfall with uh, uh, Sarah Jane tumbling down the hill, which doesn't really look <laughs> like she's in any kind of danger whatsoever. <laughs> but, you know. Yo, real quick, real quick. With that, did the doctor have to tie her up and drag her with the car or get her back up? That right. was a, bit, a little too much. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I think uh, in in defense of Peter Davison's doctor, um, the way I looked at him, I don't think he was really limp. I just think that that was an opportunity to see the doctor as a young man. So he's inexperienced. In other words, he's he gets into trouble and he often doesn't get out of trouble. He ends up, you know, making mistakes and you know, losing companions and stuff like that. So uh, I wouldn't say he was the limp doctor, uh, but I, I I would say it was just. That was the point, wasn't it? He was supposed to be young and inexperienced. But um, anyway, yeah, it's 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 a fun anniversary episode. I think I, I would give it probably like a, a seven or an eight, probably an eight. It's pretty well made. All right, cool, bro, cool. All right, I guess, uh, well, how about you, Kevin? Now, this is Kevin's first time ever watching it today, right? Yeah, uh, really, my first time today. Well, it was... Uh, one of my favorite episodes, I can say, of the classical now, because I'm young and the tempo, of course. But the tempo of this episode, if I got a movie feel, like this is a movie, like the tempo is good, action, all the the uh, villains are gonna make a, a, a appearance, like Cyberman, the Master, Dalek, and. Uh, yeah, I've seen uh, now every doctor, but I I didn't know that uh, that the fourth doctor was was in it. I I thought that the the fourth the fourth doctor was in it, really because of that scene, and it was my first time. And I was like, at the end of the episode, I was like, wait, we have seen only one clip of the fourth doctor, <laughs> and then I was I was thinking about that the whole episode, really like. Where's the fourth doctor, really? Because I didn't know until now. But yeah, that thing with uh, Sarah Jane, <laughs> get the fourth doctor, help uh, her from from uh, a hill. Really, I was thought, really, you cannot walk atop of that. Like, oh, she's going down. And uh, <laughs> it was level, really. I was like, really? You got to by you got to be helped that by the doctor to come off a, a hill really, <laughs> and K nine was all uh, was was uh, in it. I know I I know Sarah Jane from the uh, new series of course, and she has uh, appearance in the new series and show, but I didn't watch the show of course of her uh, own show, but yeah overall it was uh, a good episode really. 10 out of 10 for me. Oh, wow. 10 out of 10, your first viewing today. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. That makes, that makes me happy, man. Younger guys watching this for the first time, enjoying it. How cool was that? How cool was that? And yeah, my brother said, really, my brother said, like, when he was going, uh, going home from uh, shopping with uh, getting uh, stuff to eat later today and uh, for the weekend. Shit. I, and then he said, 
are you watching Doctor Who again? Really, the classic Who? You don't have to watch it. I said, I really, you like you have, you don't have, you must not watch it. And I I, I said, you you're not gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna do what I do. I I if I watch it, I watch it. And then he said, Yeah, you are now a fanboy. You're gonna get a t-shirt and. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Let's not give your brother any more shout outs. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, 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 guy. he liked. Really, he's he's the same age as me, and he liked uh, the new Who, of course, but the old Who because of it's it's old and the tempo, of course. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you for yeah. the information there. All right, Harry. You there, bro? I'm here. All right, man. I want to just say, Five Doctors, classic. Saw it when first aired, heard in the United States that day. He loved it. Loved the book. Loved the DVD. Hart Herndella's Hartnell did a great job. The, tri the clip from Hartnell from Den the Dalek Invasion of Earth, superb. I mean. Trotten back in his next to last role as the Doctor, who, who, who Nick Courtney is the Brigadier, always a great combo. Liz Slayton and John Perkley, two people always worked well together. Shada for Tom Baker, Peter who, with Mark Strickson and Janet Fielding. I mean, all I gotta say is this. You wouldn't see how to do a classic story. You want to see how to do an anniversary story, right? This is the story you want to be watching. This is the story you want to take notes from. My personal rating on it, 10 out of 10, and that's only because I can go up to 10. If I could do more, I would give it even a higher rating. Awesome, Harry. And if, like, uh, like if, if you could show everybody what you had with you, you're, you got the, uh... Just give me one sec to grab the book. The Silver Color cover version of the five doctors wow that is nice man now is the is the novel any different than the actual television show there are some extra clips in there for example the way the the scene with susan where she is snatched that is not in the tv broadcast but it's in the book the description of where they take we have the first doctor from that is in there and it's much different than shown on tv they talk about him being with his roses and his bees and such before his body because he knew his body was wearing out personality was going he could sense the regeneration was coming and that's when he was snatched in his own private garden and that's one thing that was talked about with perkley they talked about the fact that when he came to grab him, he put Bessie into overdrive. And it still managed to catch him. <laughs> I mean, it was just, there's just so many different little clips and everything that are in the novelization. And my hat's off to of Terrence because not only did he do the TV special, he wrote the novelization as well. And as I said time and time again, you want to get into reading the classic book, classic era novelizations, grab them by Terrence Six, because when Terrence is on a roll, you cannot go wrong. Well, there you go from Harry, and Harry gave that a perfect 10, didn't you? Hey, because I've got, like I can say, I've got all the novelizations here, and when it comes to Terrence, Terrence is the man that got me hooked on reading the book, so. Cool, cool. Well, thank, thanks, Harry, for sharing that with us, man. Hey, no problem. Always glad to share your information like I've got. That's cool, though. That's cool to know because, you know, some people don't know. I mean, they, they did write books for some of these classic episodes, and they differ a little bit, but it's cool to hear, you know, some of the things they added in the books. Thanks, Harry. Now, Jimmy will uh, read Graham's review on it. He's unable to join us right now. So take it away there, Jimmy. Enjoyable and satisfactory episode, if not 100% perfect. Great to see Pertwee and Trotton back. Richard Hartnell, standing in for Bill Hartnell, did a bang-up job. Caroline was a delight as ever. The episode does suffer slightly from the absence of Tom Baker, but that was his choice. And as a few of our cast members would agree, the rest of Warrior Robot stole the show and kicked ass overall. Rating, 
eight out of ten. Well, shame on you, Graham McLaughlin, for not joining us today. But we love you, man. We'll forgive you. But, um, yeah, I share the excitement of, of the guys out there that really enjoyed the episode. Again, this is an episode, you know, I saw when I was, like, 12 years old for the first time, you know. I didn't see when it originally first came out. It was, I think it was, like, a couple years later, like, three years later. Loved it. I loved the. I loved it. You know, it's always cool to get a cool multi-doctor story. Again, it did stink that we really didn't get Tom Baker, you know, to mix it up with the doctors a bit. But I thought, you know, I thought it was a cool episode. I thought it was cool. We got we got our, you know, our cool-looking Cybermen in it. We got the Master in it, which was cool, you know. Um, and, yeah, like a couple, couple of you guys said, that Rastan Warrior robot is one thing that the – well, the third doctor – Man, he was a, he was afraid of that thing, man. Like you know, that was cool. You, you don't usually see the doctor, you know, really scared much. So I would definitely agree with you guys out there that think that they should bring the uh, Raston Warrior robot back. Maybe get a little or, origin on on this thing, or you know, or who made it, or where it came from. You know, that that would be awesome. Um, seeing the classic companions was cool. Seeing Susan was awesome. You know, it. Cause you, I don't know. Cause you always imagine Susan coming back. What would she say to the doctor? I don't know. That wasn't really like she didn't play it out like it was too big of a deal. The doctor left her or anything. Like really, that wasn't really brought up. But whatever. I, you know, all in all, still a classic episode. I enjoy. I enjoyed the. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the big, the big chessboard freaking. What do you call it? The uh, thing they had to walk over. That was cool. Seeing the master trick and the Cybermen and the walking on the wrong squares or whatever that was cool seeing the the first doctor uh meeting the master for the first time well I, you know it was kind of interesting he didn't recognize him although the like the master said we were in school together he didn't the doctor didn't seem to make a big issue of it the first doctor but that was cool the, the then the, then there was that scene where the master like stepped over a dead body that he said well, oh my my predecessor not a hundred percent sure what that meant. I'm not sure because it looked like it was a skeleton, but it looked like it had the, the robe of the old zombified master for some reason. If you look at it, which was weird, I, I did watch it again today for like God, I don't even know how many times I watched this episode, but I watched it with my youngest. Luna wanted to watch it with me because just me and her were home, and she even liked it, man. And she's only like nine years old, but she thought it was a cool idea, even though she was talking the whole time, like trying to make out who was who and how's the doctor meeting himself. She's still younger, you know, and she's, she's still getting into the show too. But, but it, you know, it always excites me to see, um, you know, newer fans like checking out the classics and it's cool to talk to the younger guys and girls and, you know, and if they have questions, they can ask, you know, some of us older guys that know more stuff, you know, which is always cool to do because, geez, we have, you know, again, we have we got a great panel here. We got Beef Dad that's practically seen every episode aired, aired starting with the first one. I mean, geez, how awesome is it to have a guy like that here? Then you got the younger guys here like like Daniel and Elijah and Kevin. I mean, and these guys are just, you know, they're starting to, in the past couple of years, they're starting to watch like some of the classics. So this is exciting. This is how everything will just keep going. Cause one day we'll be, we'll be too old to be hosting these shows and stuff. And them got, these guys will take over and keep the doctor who love going. And that's awesome. Definitely. It just nostalgia and, and, and the episode itself and what it means to me. It's a, it's a 10 for me, man. I mean, I, I, I just love it. Yeah, of course, of course, all of us agree. Tom Baker in the in the actual episode would have just man really knocked it out of the park, man. It it really would have. It's a shame we didn't get that. It's a sh it was you know all right. Show some clips of, of you know another episode shot of, but still kind of a misleading title there. But you know it's cool. It's a classic, and it'll, it'll always just hold a special, you know, place in my heart. And I'll always recommend kids or younger guys that are getting into Doctor Who if they want to watch a classic. That would be like top. I would say, hey man, check this out, guys. You get a little mix of, you know, each of the Doctors. You know, got Bessie. You got Bessie. Pert, we made sure he was in Bessie, man. And just seeing Bessie again, just seems like what Capaldi needs to get Bessie at least for one episode. 
because he would look beautiful driving Bessie. He would look most beautiful, you know, and that's, that's really all I have to say. I love the episode. We can go on and on and on about it. I don't know if any other guys out there have any more, you know, little tips you know, on the episode. Take it away. Um, yeah, it's good to see also as well. We got Petwe in the same story with Cybermen. It's first time ever, really. Yeah. You know, he never, he never met true. someone yet. Also as well, in this age of spoilers, we got spoilers back then. The, no, the Target novelization was released before the broadcast. Oh. I, I remember reading it before it was even broadcast. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I, I used to have that, the same novel as Harry's got. I don't know what happened to it now, but it was absolutely read. I read it from a page to page. It was brilliant. And finally, I would say Anthony Ainley is the master. Um, he always gets knocks from the fans because he's the shadow of Delgado. But to me, it was a brilliant actor. Yeah. And I, I really do miss the old Duffer because um, we, we used to be friends. And it's uh, to see him up there as the master again with his uh, evil laugh, hmm. it made it for me. Yeah. Really do miss him. That's cool, man. That's cool, Lee. There's a great scene in there where the master is on Gallifrey in front of the Time Lords, and they're explaining to him why uh, why he's there. And they're reading off the list, and they're describing him as the most villainous man in the world and stuff. And he's just sitting there smiling, taking it like they're compliments. It, it, it's just terrific. I, I agree. Uh, Anley was terrific as the master in this episode. Yeah, he was a great master. He definitely and was. Anthony Ainley was a good master. He he had to fill very big shoes after taking over from Roger Delgado, and he did it brilliantly. It was pretty seamless um, from the point of view of someone who was watching all the way through, and he just seamlessly took over from Roger Delgado, and there was absolutely no problem over that everybody said what do you think of the new master i said he's not the new master he's the same master just played by a different man and he is excellent he was very very good yeah and as you say the laugh was absolutely perfect but uh as i say the only reason it got a nine and a half out of ten for me was the floating head of rassilon <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sorry, I, it was Wizard of Oz to me, and that re at, at, at a point where I really should have been like that, I was laughing. Yeah, yeah, um, you know what? You're right. You're right. Which was a bit of a shame, um, but the the faces in the in Rassilon's tomb, very very creepy. Yeah, very creepy. And I remember an awful lot of people were really creeped out by those faces in the tomb when they came, actually came alive. Mm. And um, again, yeah, the first doctor is the one that saves the day there because he's saying, yes, give it to him. Give it yeah. to him. And all the rest of them are saying, what? But he knows give he's it worked him. it out. Um, it, it's... It's a very, very clever piece of writing, a very nice, clever twist, which when you, when you listen to the story and you're watching the story, um, wrestle, the thing about you get what you want, and uh, if, 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 you, if you win, you lose, if you lose, you win, um, it tends to go over your head a bit, hmm. because nothing's made of it. But the reference is there. Yeah. Well, then, it, it, then it, you're right. It's he gets to live different. forever. He gets to live forever as a yeah. cement block. Years later, what did the tenth doctor do? Turn a Ursula Blake into a cement block. So she has to live forever. That, from Love and Monsters, by the way. Yeah. You remember the end of that one, where again you got a face in a in a cement block, which is not I. You know that's the whole another thing right there. But yeah. That's that's it. That's what that guy has to suffer forever as a face. Yeah. On the it's very very cleverly done. Yeah. Uh, 
loved it. But yeah, you're right. It was Wizard of Odd, Wizard of Odd ish at yeah. the end there. We we got a Scarecrow mention at the end, so there you go. Yeah. To top it off. Exactly. <laughs> so so does anybody else have anything on this or? We good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you uh, hear that? Uh, uh, that he said like uh, you're gonna rescue the doctor, and he like, oh, really? Mm. <laughs> and then, and then in return for a regeneration cycle, that was pretty interesting. Yes, yes. Exactly. Also with uh, West a lot though, of uh, how he's called. <laughs> that was funny with the uh, with the ad and uh, like, do you want uh, to the doctors? Do you want immortality and they thought like hell no. <laughs> uh, I have seen what happens. Carrots actually, sorry, Carrots actually did go into a little bit about the monster and his need for a new regeneration cycle in the novelization. As he put it, he had stolen the body of Tremus. The thing is, it wasn't a Time Lord body. So when it started to age and decay, he he would have to find himself a new one, and so on and so forth, until he could find himself a Time Lord body. So the, that's why he was so, he didn't show it. As Terrence put in the novelization, he kept, he took everything he had to keep his face his still, when they offered him the opportunity to have a new regeneration cycle. So it took everything he had to keep his face still. Because you get that, it to end his renegade existence and everything. And who knew that was all a game by Barusa uh, to get the secret of immortality from Rassilon. There you go, beautiful. From the book. Oh, yes. Also also as well, Mike, the the seal of Rassilon was seen again in um, the time of the doctor. There you go. How cool is that? All right, so did everybody say their piece on this episode? Uh, if, if not, raise your hand. Um, go ahead, Brian. What did you got, bro? I love this anniversary special. Um, I I didn't I didn't like it as much as the Three Doctors, but I still loved it. I thought it was a cool story, like a cool story for a cool story for Doctor Who, like like for like for the Five Doctors, like a but the five doctors are coming together. Um, I I was I I wanted I I wish they would have done like them all coming together within like to team up and defeat the uh, the threat that they had to do. The actor that replaced the first doctor, I thought he did okay, I thought he did okay as the first doctor. Um, I I still. Will always love William Hartnell's Doctor as the original. I've seen both versions of the um, the Five Doctors, and I like the I like the special edition better. I think it gave more it it, it had more footage to it, and I think it gave the story more. I think it gave just more to the story. Like you, I thought it fit better with the the extra footage within that story. So yeah, I also love how they brought back the third Doctor's card, Bessie. Five Doctors, awesome. Mm. Awesome, yeah. What do you rate that? A ten, then? I would probably give it a six. All right, all right. There you go. You'll Can you it. hear me, Beefhead? Oh, yes. Well, the great bearded British beef is here with us today, man. He hopped on in. What are your feelings on this episode, my friend? It's a 10 out of 10. 100%. If I could give it more than a 10, I will definitely give it more than a 10. I remember it when it first aired, watching it when it first aired. And I think I, it may have been one of the few things I did have on video that I rewatched several times that I recorded on home video at that time. Um, not not knowing, obviously, being late to the party, what the rest of you guys have been saying, but certainly, yeah, uh, how can you rate it anything less than a ten when you've got, you know, Carol Ann Ford, you've got, uh, you know, so many past companions back, 
you've got the fantastic fight between the Cybermen and the Raston Warrior robot. And it's even better if you just get that little glimpse of the Cyberman throwing up as he gets killed by the Raston Warrior robot as well. Um, the Master is fantastic in it as well. Um, it's, it's all done really nicely. Uh, you get, obviously, the, 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 the little bit of backstory to, to wrestle on as well. Um, and everything like that. For me, it's a fantastic, fantastic, fun episode to watch. Um, and I, it was a, a, a great celebration. If anything, I do feel, going back and watching that, that we could have maybe had something like this for the anniversary last year, but it, it was fantastic. I love it a bit. And it's, you know, yeah, it's in Swaddle Tap, it's an 11. All right, beautiful beef, beautiful man. Well, we all pretty much said what we had to say, unless anybody has any more to say about this episode. Bring, so back, guess... the Rast, bring back the Raston Warrior Robot. Oh, That's okay. what I will say. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. Bring back the Raston Warrior Robot. We want to see Capaldi, you know, have a little fight uh, with him. Raston did show up in the Eight Doctors. The novelization for that one done by Turn 6. Oh, well, there you go there. We'll have to get into that sometime. Definitely I'm, bring, bring him Capaldi. back. I'd like yeah. to see Capaldi with K nine. Would love to see. <laughs> would love to see Capaldi with K nine. Would love to see Capaldi with so Bessie. Funny. I don't know about Bessie. I don't. I don't know. No. All right, gonna kick Neo out of here. Hold on. All right. <laughs> now, uh, Capaldi would look most awesome driving Bessie. Not all the time. Maybe just for like a little episode in a scene or something. Just cruising along, you know. But um, it seemed like most of us loved it. Some of us didn't. But um, I thought it was a great, great anniversary episode. And again, happy, happy anniversary weekend to our great Doctor Who, 51 years old today. So, and it's still going strong. And we got our new Doctor. And most of us love him. I love him. And I want to thank everybody here for joining us. You're all a bunch of great peeps. Love yous. And, and of course, check out our, you know, our buddy's channel. Check out Sammy Carter. Check out David Aston. Check out Dr. Freedom. Check us all out and keep on hooing, everybody. Oh, yeah.